Hi, and welcome back to Ultra Human. My name is Rachel, and this is the third day of Vlogmas. I am here to help you be your best human, and I'm gonna do that today by explaining why you can't go to bed before 2 a.m. So in the last video where I talked about some other sleep tips, Beast of No Nation said that he can't get to sleep typically before two in the morning. This is actually a very common time that people go to bed, and there's a very good reason for that. And if you would like to start going to bed earlier, there probably are some things that you can do to facilitate that. And I have a little backwards drawn diagram since that's how it shows up on the camera that I'm gonna share with you to try and explain this. So we talked, maybe it was all in the podcast, uh, which check out the Ultra Human podcast, which I just started. Um, I already did record the third episode, but we talked in the bad news about sleep, about how we have a peak time. Most people, for, for most people, that's in the morning. Then there's a trough. Then we have a recovery period, and then hopefully you drift off to sleep nicely. This diagram is not a full 24 hours, but starting here around 10 a.m., most people are within that peak period of their day. They have the most vigilance and concentration, they can finish a task, and this is also when we have the least sleep pressure. And this is the buildup of adenosine in our brains. This is what's left over when ATP, that comes from the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, that is energy in our body, and as it breaks down, it builds up. Ideally, we release this and we metabolize it, and it comes out of our brain and our cells during sleep. That's one of the regenerative properties of sleep. So as you can see, this line is how sleepy we are. Now, maybe this is an exaggeration, but just for the effect. Essentially, what happens is that around two o'clock in the afternoon, we have this trough period. And during this time, the sleep pressure has built up. And right around four o'clock in the afternoon, this is all different for everyone. Maybe start paying attention to your own cycles and see when you get this afternoon sleepy feeling where you start to kind of lose concentration. This is actually a very dangerous time of day. Uh, lots of car accidents happen, surgical mistakes. If you can manage to schedule yourself for like a dot, like a more important, like a surgery kind of thing with the doctor earlier in the day, you're gonna be much better off uh, than if you end up in there like in the afternoon. So that's immediately followed by a big release of adrenaline, endorphins, other hormones like cortisol are going to release to push us through this next part of the day. Now, additionally, we can take a nap during this part of the day. Interesting fun fact, uh, one and a half hour nap in the afternoon is just as effective at storing and recording memories as a full night's sleep. In fact, an hour and a half nap in the afternoon is better at encoding those memories than an interrupted or a short sleep even, sleep night, like six hours or less. So then we hit what we call the first wind. That's what I'm calling it, because that's that was the first thing that I thought of when he said, I go to sleep at 2 a.m. I'm like, nah, you're just riding that second wind all the way to where you're really tired and that sleep pressure has built up to a pretty high level. So in the evening, that tends to run out, that first burst of hormones actually runs out somewhere between nine o'clock to 11 o'clock in the evening. If for whatever reason, like you haven't laid down in a dark room with your eyes shut and you're not messing with the phone to go to bed, then we find that we get another release of hormones somewhere around 11.30 to midnight. And if you are up during that time and you get that release of hormones, it's going to be next to impossible for you to go to sleep before two o'clock in the morning. If you find yourself awake after two o'clock in the morning, then somewhere around three o'clock in the morning, you'll get another release of that. And then you've pretty much missed almost an entire night of sleep. It just watch the bad news, listen to the bad news about sleep podcast, and you can find out how terrible that is. Or go listen to at Sleep Dap Diplomat, Matthew Walker. Um, he does great interviews all over YouTube. My favorite is where he sat down and spoke with Dr. Rhonda Patrick. It, for, and these numbers can all fluctuate back and forth by, uh, I would say probably about three hours, depending on who you are, your body type. I don't think most people are waking up at four o'clock in the morning, but there's probably like a 1% of people who do. You still need that seven, eight hours of sleep prior to that. Um, but depending on your body type and everything, I think there's even like a one in a hundred thousand. It's probably way less than that. That actually is a lot of people. 
um, there's a very rare person out there who probably does just fine off of six hours of sleep. It is, they're like statistically irrelevant. But um, if you are trying to get to sleep earlier or you're trying to get more sleep so that you can wake up earlier, um, one of the ways to do that is just to prepare for sleep. We call it sleep hygiene prior to that 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And if you're laying down in bed and you're done with your day and you might actually go to sleep. You might find that you are tired enough to drift off to sleep. Now, if during that afternoon trough, you sat down and had a cup of coffee to try and get through it, um, I actually did make a mistake in my podcast. I said that the half-life of caffeine was 12 hours. That's not true, that's the quarter life. So the half-life of caffeine is six hours. So I've heard people say, don't drink caffeine six hours before bed. Six hours before bed, half of the caffeine is still in your system. So if you drink at a cup of coffee at four o'clock in the afternoon, then at 10 o'clock at night, half of that coffee is still in your system. So the, the quarter life is 12 hours. So if you can cut off your coffee before, let's say noon, then some of it's still gonna be in your system. It probably won't be enough to stop you from going to bed. It's probably not ideal for your actual sleep as far as the depth of sleep that you're getting and the quality of sleep, but probably not gonna quit drinking coffee. I know I'm not, so. Finally, it is day three of the 12 days of minimalism, and so I went through my kitchen today and I found two identical giant ladles that I've never used and a second whisk that was unnecessary at the bottom of my tool drawer of the kitchen. And so these guys are gonna go bye-bye. That's all I have for you today. Happy Vlogmas. Get out there and be your best human and I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Bye.